Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining our call today and joining live. Um, Jeff just mentioned, we are going to be recording today's session of our first community conversations in Flint. Um, we certainly will be recording because others absolutely will want to engage at a time if they can't join us live today. So our call will host three special community guests and highlighting some of the work and the progress that's happening right here in this awesome community of Flint. We absolutely invite you to please add questions, engage in the comment section um, using the chat during the program, and we'll do our best to answer those questions, add into the chat during the program. Anything that we are not able to get to, we'll follow up with you on, and certainly you can reach out to us as well. My name is Jenny Beamer, and I am the Director of Development across Greater Michigan. I have been with the organization for almost 20 years and am absolutely personally passionate about this mission for very personal reasons. Um, I also happen to live in the Genesee County area. So um, this area is near and dear to my heart and I grew up here. Now on the screen, you'll see my colleague, Jeff Larson. He is the development manager working really across the entire mid-Michigan area. So Genesee County, Great Lakes Bay region. And a fun fact about Jeff, him in a pink bunny suit is not unique. So today is Jeff's 1,433rd day of incorporating pink into his wardrobe in honor of his grandmother's breast cancer journey. You'll hear from Jeff in a moment um, in the conversations with our community guests. They have joined us live on this call, but because we could and would love to talk to them all day, in essence of time, Jeff did get a chance to interview our guests in advance of this call. And next you see Mindy Odom. She is our Cancer Control Strategic Partnerships Manager, is an awesome resource. And not only is Mindy actually my colleague, but she's practically my neighbor. She lives right here in Genesee County as well. Uh, Mindy? Thank you, Jenny. So data tells us that African Americans are at an increased risk of developing and dying from colorectal cancer. This is a significant health inequity. Thankfully, Flint, Michigan has a very talented researcher with a special interest in increasing colorectal cancer screening and decreasing colorectal cancer deaths, primarily in our African American communities. It is my genuine pleasure to introduce our first guest, Dr. Todd Lucas of Michigan State University. He is a recent recipient of the American Cancer Society Extramural Discovery Science. Uh, Dr. Lucas received a grant for five years, over $1.7 million to further his science, his passion, and ultimately his impact, right? Uh, Todd is a great friend of the American Cancer Society. I have thoroughly enjoyed partnering with him for a few years. His uh, unique outlook and vision and genuine excitement for change is uh, its contagious. And, and it makes me excited for our future. I am genuinely thrilled for you to hear a little more about his personal story and his science story. Uh, Jeff, take it away. So one of the things we would like to hear first is to learn about your why. Why did you start this work? What led you to the research that you've done that you've got going on? Yeah, um, so I think a lot of my why uh, comes from kind of where I was trained as a psychologist and sort of just observing what was going on around me. Um, and really thinking about things that I could do with my training to actually try to make a difference. So my graduate training and my subsequent career started in Detroit. Um, and, you know, Detroit is a, is a predominantly African-American city, uh, lots of health disparities, lots of racial health disparities in the city. So that context, I think, really was the thing that got me thinking um, why do these disparities exist? And, and more importantly, 
um, what are some things that I can do with the training that I've been fortunate enough to receive to actually try to quote unquote move the needle. Um, so I think that was the path that really got me thinking about the work that I do. And it really kind of an offshoot of that is it really got me thinking about cancer and cancer screening. And those are really the things that I think inform kind of, kind of my why. That's awesome. So can you tell us a little bit more about some of the details? First off, we recently learned that you got some funding, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's a uh, ACS Reach Research Scholars Award. So this is a five-year award that is going to fund my uh, community partners and collaborators and I uh, to do work that we're doing in Flint and in Detroit around the issue of colorectal cancer screening. And the thrust of that project is, is near and dear to our hearts. So we're gonna try to do things that we think will, will move the needle and hopefully encourage people to partake in colorectal cancer screening more than they do. And uh, hopefully to do that in a way that reduces disparities that we see in colorectal cancer, even, even now. Awesome. That uh, screenings are so important and, and we've seen such a drop in screenings over the last year. Um, but the disparities you're looking at existed even pre COVID, right? That's true. Yeah, that's true, Jeff. So uh, colorectal cancer disparities are, interesting. Um, so they're always there. And, uh, you know, one of the things that I am happy to say is that in, in, in the last several years, and, and even extending more, maybe over decades, um, that gap has narrowed a bit. So um, the disparities, it, it's a nice story, because the disparities are, are, are cleaning up a bit. Um, but they're still there. And, you know, we, we've sort of hit the wall in terms of, of diminishing those disparities. And, and I think what it really suggests is that we need new approaches and we need to keep trying and we need to come up with solutions that can keep moving the needle in the right direction. Uh, and that's sort of where our research is trying to pick up is thinking about new ways that we can address the issue of colorectal cancer screening in places like Flint and Detroit and um, minority communities uh, in a way that that hopefully will will kind of address some of the disparities that we're still seeing. You know, it's not often that we get to localize some of the work that's being done. We're often asked at the American Cancer Society, you know, is my money staying local? And for the past year, we've had a number of things that have been suspended for safety reasons. Um, but even during that time, we talk about the large chunk of, of the donations that come in going towards research. And we can point to research that's being done in the state, that's being done for particular types of cancers. But a lot of the people listening probably have not ever heard from somebody that, that's a flint person <laughs> that is, is a, a recipient of, of that funding. What does it mean to you to be able to kind of be a signal to the community that, hey, those dollars do come right here? Yeah. I, I'm so glad you brought that up, Jeff. Um, it, it means the world. Um, you know, Flint is a really special place. And the effort that Michigan State University undertook to be involved in Flint and to partner with Flint um, I think is a really, really unique thing. You know, we have a mandate in the Division of Public Health in Flint and at MSU to do research in partnership with community. Um, so, you know, in, in my research, I always try to make the distinction between doing research on people, doing research for people and doing research with people. And for me, it's, it's really those last two. You need to be able to do research for people, but you also need to be able to do that research with people. And coming to Flint, uh, I, I think, has really just sort of underscored that for me. Um, so it, it, it means the world to be able to do this work in a place like Flint and in partnership with good community organizations in Flint that are really going to make this work fly. Um, I, I think one of the things that you know, time teaches is that, you know, interventions don't get far unless you have the support of the community who's implementing them. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's really what we're going to learn in Flint. And that's why I'm really, really excited to be doing this work in, in the place that we're doing it. 
I can tell you what my my connection uh, as it stands right now is is in the breast cancer space with making strides against breast cancer with real men wear pink those initiatives and if history teaches us anything it's that Flint is an extremely involved and supportive community so I I hesitate to speak for everybody on the call today but I am uh, confident that you will get a number of people that will be watching for ways that they can be involved in this in this research and and help so that excites me i todd it's you're fun to talk to i <laughs> well, i'm glad to hear that <laughs> you know i i think when you're talking i can hear i can hear the science and, and everything that you've learned but i can hear the heart as well um i can hear the reasons why you know, it, it's not to not to write the perfect message, not to put some numbers on a board, but to save lives. That's you know what we're all doing this for. Um, and I'm so excited representing ACS to have partners like yourself. You know, um, it it takes everybody. You know, it takes the village, right? It takes everybody. It takes somebody with a lemonade stand, with a pop can drive, with t-shirt sales and 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 all of that um but it takes people to be able to actually do something with that funding um that is way beyond what i'm intellectually capable of so uh we're so glad to officially have have you and msu flint as a partner yeah well it's it's such a thrill for us too jeff and um I have been so excited for years to find uh, find a project to partner with ACS on, and um, I, I'm really, really looking forward to running forward with ACS as our funding partner here. You know, in in my world, funding for projects like this can come from different places. Um, the thing that's always really struck me about ACS is is their focus on that issue of moving the needle. Um, so as an organization, ACS really tries to meet people where they're at and to do what needs to be done um, in terms of getting people to screening, getting people to the care that they need, um, and really just sort of being a practical sort of entity for getting this work done. Um, so I really like that sort of working class mentality of ACS and, and really kind of the, the, the culture that I sense there of you know, get it done and, and do something that matters to people in, in a tangible way. So Todd, we've talked about the excitement in, in us partnering together. Um, as I mentioned, it takes a village. Who else is in your village? Who else would you like to, you know, give a shout out to that has really helped bring this to where it is? Great question. Uh, so it does take a village and in projects like ours, uh, it, it, it's not just the folks like me at the universities, the investigators with the fancy degree, um, but it's also the folks in the community who are, who are doing the work and uh, the, the people who can pair folks like us together. So we've got some really great partners lined up in the ACS project that we're hoping to launch over the next five years. Um, I'm happy to say that we're working with two federally qualified health centers in Southeast Michigan. We've got one locally based in Flint and we've got another one based in Detroit. Um, these have been essential partners, I think, in helping us think through the opportunity to do this work and where the opportunity for innovation and doing this work differently might lie. Uh, we've also got some great community partners, Jeff, that are going to play a role um, in terms of helping us to make sure that our materials and that our intervention is, is going to resonate with, with folks in Flint and in Detroit. Um, so my colleague Haley, uh, Haley Thompson at uh, Carmanos Cancer Institute in Detroit has set up this really cool network of uh, cancer action councils. So these are community members who Haley has recruited uh, for the express purpose of learning about and communicating about cancer uh, within, the, within the community. So we've got these folks lined up as partners as well, who are going to give us feedback on the materials that we develop and, and really they're going to be our, our lockstep collaborators in, in putting this work together. 
Um, so I'm really thrilled to, to call them partners in this work as well. Uh, so it, it does take a village and I'm, I'm pleased to say that we've got some really great community partners that I think are really, really essential to making, to making this work go. That's so awesome. Um, Todd, I could, I could listen to the intricacies of this all day. It, <laughs> it's the type of thing that geeks me out and inspires me and, uh, gets me fired up to to go out and find more people to partner in these efforts um but i know that that you've got work to do i i know that the people on the call are are excited to hear from additional partners as well so uh i want to thank you and uh transition to our our next presentation thanks todd thanks so much jeff and thanks acs for the opportunity and now I want to transition to our next guest. I am so thrilled to be joined by a pair of amazing women from Mott Community College, Dr. Beverly Walker Griffia. Uh, Dr. Beverly is entering her eighth year at, as the president of Mott Community College, the first African-American female to be president at Mott. Um, Dr. Beverly is an 11 year breast cancer survivor, which is awesome. Cannot celebrate that enough. Um, throughout her career, Dr. Beverly has always seen students first and worked to ensure that all students had access to quality education, um, quality affordable education, which is fantastic. Love that. Um, among the, the list of many, many things that Dr. Beverly does in and for Flint is that she serves on the board of directors for the Greater Flint Health Coalition, um, which is fantastic work. Uh, we are so excited to hear from you, Dr. Beverly. I also want to introduce Jennifer Follett. So Jennifer is the Mott Community College Making Strides Against Breast Cancer Chair. So really coordinates a lot of the efforts that uh, Mott, the campus, the students, uh, the faculty that everybody does to benefit our local Making Strides Against Breast Cancer efforts. So thank you both for joining us. Um, Dr. Beverly, I'd love to, to start first and, and hear a little bit more. We know that that as a breast cancer survivor, um, that it seems obvious why you would be involved. However, we know that not all cancer survivors get involved with the American Cancer Society. Um, there's a lot of opportunities to get a lot, uh, get involved in other ways. What has drawn you to the American Cancer Society? So, uh, yes, I'm, I, I know that it sounds obvious, but I don't know if anyone really understands when they say you have cancer, what that really means. Um, it is for me, uh, a point of despair, um, chilling and shocking. Uh, it was something that I did not I really didn't think was going to happen. I, I had a background where uh, breast cancer uh, is in my family. Um, I have been having mammograms since my 20s and um, always had lumps. I have dense breasts. And so uh, they were always checking, you know, uh, many different times when you thought, will this be a you know, this is it, but, you know, you'd have the biopsy and, you know, it's just a fibroid and, you know, those kinds of things or a cyst. And, and so uh, this time it was, you know, you find it, you're at a conference, it's, you know, a national conference, you find this lump, you call your doctor because you just had a mammogram. You've just had the exam by the doctor and nothing was seen. And so basically she poo-pooed it off and felt like, you know, this is just another one of those things, settle down, Beverly, you know, you know, we go through this, but for some reason it was just, this just felt different. It just felt different. And 
you know, the end result was that it was um, stage two uh, by the time that they did the biopsy. And my world changed dramatically. If it wasn't for the American Cancer Society, um, I think I would have been more stressed um, than without them. We have to put the efforts into the research, uh, into the resources, so that everybody has uh, an equitable chance in surviving. Knowing that Black women have the highest breast cancer death rate of all racial and ethnic groups, and it's 40%, 41% higher uh, than white women. It, you know, that, that's, that should alarm us, mm -hmm. you know, that that's happening. Um, knowing that, you know, we have our, uh, our, our, what is it, our, our information that says, you know, you need to start having that uh, mammogram at age 50, and yet Black women are more likely, like myself, uh, to be diagnosed with breast cancer before the age of 50. Uh, knowing that African-American women are more likely to have the more aggressive breast cancers um, that move swiftly. Knowing, just like I said in my previous answer, that we are more likely to have denser breasts. I mean, I heard that all my life. And so the mammogram does not pick that up. And yet, even though there are now new ways of trying to find you know, the cancer earlier, we're still using those same kinds of things uh, to find it with African-American women because they don't often have the best care the insurance that's going to cover the types of things that are going to help them survive if they are uh, breast cancer uh, breast cancer uh, patients. And so um, I, I think that as Americans, we have to pay attention to that it is not a one size fit all. Uh, and, and that's all kinds of health disparities that we know are happening within our uh, different types of racial and ethnic groups. It, it really is for everything. But then you see these things that are so obvious and you say, well, why would that still continue on? Why aren't we trying to stop that? Why aren't we offering the resources earlier um, as if African-American women's lives are as important as the other lives. So um, it is near and dear to my heart. I know that I made a donation uh, this past year to honor the 10 year survival um, to go to um, African American um, patients that are in the Flint and Genesee County area to get the resources that they need because it, it's not there. And we know it because the statistics are showing us that. And so we have to pay attention. Mm -hmm. Thank you for, so much for adding that. I have actually, uh, we didn't talk about this, some kind of breaking news. Uh, I don't know if you have seen, but the American Cancer Society just announced that on June 1st, our new CEO will be starting. Um, <laughs> And I wanted to share with you a little bit of information about our new CEO because I am just totally jazzed. Her name okay. is Dr. Karen Knudsen. Um, she is uh, based in Philadelphia and she has actually been a uh, oncology researcher herself. Um, mm -hmm. You, you might be surprised to know that it's been almost 70 years since our CEO was themselves a researcher. Uh, she ran the Philadelphia-based Sydney Kimmel Cancer Center at Thomas Jefferson Health. 
uh, which is one of only 71 National Cancer Institute designated cancer centers recognized for its research and impact on cancer outcomes. I am completely excited about the work that, uh, that we'll be doing under her leadership. Um, with that excitement, I'm curious, what are you excited about? What are you hopeful for? Uh, you know, beyond the things that we've talked about so far, what would you, what, what do you want to see from your American Cancer Society? Uh, what would I like to see? Well, number one, when you said, you know, what am I, what would I hope for? What am I excited about? I, I, I want a cure. Um, I think that, I mean, I love that we are putting more money into women's health now, but it's still not enough. And so I want, when people say you have cancer, breast cancer especially, that they say, and this is what we're going to do to stop that progression and to turn it around and you're done. And, and, and you know you're done, that's it. Um, and that's a long time coming, but I hope it's not. But I also know it takes funding and it takes people like you said, the new, um, leader of ACS uh, to be able to ascertain what needs to happen so we can stop the deaths with cancer. We need to stop it, period. Um, other things though are just, I guess, I talked about the support of the ACS and, and I think it's great, but probably more support, more um, education in the ethnic communities with people that look like them. Um, oftentimes we don't hear because we don't know how to relate or we, we, we have barriers because we don't look like each other. And so finding those inroads and those connections so that Everyone can learn what they need to do, when they need to do it, and get the care that they need. Um, you know, as I said, you know, self-advocacy, how do you do that? A lot of times, especially in our um, areas that are uh, impoverished, um, it's more of a paternal health system. And, and that does not work. Mm -hmm. And that is why you see people not wanting to go uh, to doctors. And, you know, there's just been so much that has happened with that type of a system um, that was not caring for the people. It was caring more about the system. And so trying to change that so that our, and, and you heard me say all communities uh, can have um, inclusive and equitable care. Uh, and I think the ACS can do that. I think they have the name, I think they're trusted, but it's making sure you have those people that look like and understand mm -hmm. what happens at the different um, stages to be able to relate and get people to do and to move uh, how you need them to so that they can be survivors at the end of the day. And, and I, I strongly believe that. Um, Jennifer, I know that you would rather not be uh, on camera, but I would love to hear, I know that you've got some more details about just the impact that the Mott community has had uh, with the American Cancer Society through the years. Um, do you want to share with us some of that information and, and what maybe you're excited about? Um, sure. So I am excited, of course, um, to work at Mott Community College and have such an amazing family there. Um, we're very supportive of each other and it shows in all of our events that we have had over 
many years. Um, and some of the things we've brought to campus are educational opportunities that um, are open up to opened to our entire campus, our student population, our staff and our faculty, such as last year we brought Dr. Brock Humphreys, one of our researchers onto camp, well onto campus by Zoom um, for an educational event, which I found amazing. I had no idea and I cannot wait to bring him back again to see what he's researched, what his research has brought about in about two years. So it would be next year, not this year. Um, so I'm very excited for that. And a couple years ago, we actually brought a gentleman onto campus to talk to us about his breast cancer journey. Um, one of the things that people forget is that men get breast cancer. And um, I, we wanted to make sure that everyone knew that on campus and including of course our faculty, staff and students because it is a population that is um, forgotten about in some ways. Um, but again, we love the walk. Um, it is way fun and we have tons of fun on campus raising money for our American Cancer Society. Even this past year during our um, uh, pandemic, we raised over $14,500, um, which is amazing, thanks to a very supportive um, donor. And um, we had 16 team members. We were able to walk on campus, socially distanced and masked, masked of course, but we were able to have lots of fun on campus. We sprayed painted bear paws all over the campus and some pink ribbons and things like that. And I love that we are able to do that for our faculty, staff and students. Thank you so much, Todd and Dr. Beverly and Jennifer. Um, I cannot be the only one who is excited like hearing from them and the energy and the passion and everything that's happening. I hope, um, I can't see the chat, but feel free to blow it up with accolades. Thank you. Thank you, the three of you for investing your, your time and your talent with us and, and just being part of this really helpful and necessary conversation. I, I have no doubt that, um, again, everyone on this call just will feel the excitement and confidence around the work you're doing and, and continue to keep that moving with you, so. Speaking of um, certainly excitement and confidence, I really wanna take just a few minutes to elaborate on some research highlights. So you all know, and you may have heard the phrase, the American Cancer Study attacks cancer from every angle, right? Cancer is a complex disease and it's gonna take us looking at every single factor to fight it. Dr. Beverly, you said it best, right? It's, it's not a one size fits all, um, nothing is. And currently in progress right now, we're actively funding 689 research grants across the board. And of those, what's really exciting and could be for you on this, on this call is that right here in Michigan, 21 of those are being funded right here in Michigan, Todd being one of those. And Todd, I was really, um, when you mentioned your colleague, Haley Tam Thompson, my, my kind of eyes and ears perked, I was excited to hear her name. I know in the past she's been funded by the American Cancer Study and, and is also an awesome advocate and partner like you. Um, I remember hearing from her a few years ago, uh, one of her funded grants was, was specifically focused on breast cancer survivorship care and um, the Hispanic and Hispanic women. So I look forward to hearing what she had found from that research. Um, also, Dr. Beverly, you absolutely brought up such an important point um, about the fact that you're right, Black women do have a higher incidence and mortality rate from breast cancer. And in fact, a Black men and women have the highest death rate and shortest survival rate of, of any racial and ethnic group for most cancers. Um, and it's, it's something, right, everyone, we are absolutely um, taking great focus on. I was actually um, just reading last week about 10 different funded researchers that are focusing specifically funded around black women and breast cancer. Um, one, her name's Yvonne Connor, and she's using a lot of different approaches. Um, she mentions measuring blood biomarkers, using health and socioeconomic status as predictors to really identify um, minority women that are at high risk of dying for breast cancer. And I know she believes that this research will contribute to really our understanding of how to reduce racial survival disparities by improving just the overall health status 
of minority breast cancer patients and decreasing those barriers that are caused by socioeconomic disadvantages. And I know you mentioned that. Um, also something, this literally came and announced last week that we do have a $9.8 million partnership between the American Cancer Study and Pfizer Global Medical Grants. We're collaborating to specifically reduce disparities impacting black men and women facing breast cancer, prostate cancer, um, and systemic race related barriers to care. And so to do that, we are supporting 25 different community and health system projects across the nation. Um, and one of those projects is right here in Michigan, funded right here in Michigan. Um, I believe Mindy is gonna put the link to that article in the chat so you can check that out. Um, so overall though, we do have active 68 grants that are focused specifically on disparities um, because we need, we, we take that really seriously and we need to have a concerted effort and focus around that. I do know also, and, and saw some names early on, that we have a lot of you on this call today or that will watch it later that have participated in our Breaking Strides Against Breast Cancer Walk alongside Mott, or maybe been a Real Men Wear Pink candidate. And so I wanted to pull out and highlight the work that you've really helped specifically fund our focused breast cancer research. Um, of that, I know in Michigan right now, we have Dr. Lauren Walner out of University of Michigan that is currently researching disparities in delivering and quality of breast cancer survivorship care. And then Jennifer, I loved you mentioning Dr. Brock Humphreys. I look forward to you bringing him back a couple years from now to find, um, to hear the progress in his research that is specifically focused around breast cancer right here in Michigan as well. So I know that that's a lot, but just a little, uh, really, when you really look at all that we are all doing together. And if that doesn't inspire you, I would encourage you to actually check out our newest um, launch of a campaign called Research Hers, Women Fighting Cancer. It's active right now as it is National Cancer Research Month. Um, Mindy, I think is gonna add a YouTube link to that in the chat, but this campaign is really exciting as well. It gives women and girls the ability to fundraise for women-led cancer research. Um, so the funds are directed to women-led cancer research. It's certainly more than a fundraising program as everything is as well. It's, it's about bringing women together um, with the purpose of you know, being determined to sustain women-led cancer research and really recognize the female trailblazers in the field. Um, and just to ensure the unique perspective that women bring and that it remains a powerful and a growing force in the cancer research um, realm and inspire young women as well. So I'm personally also really excited about that. Also really inspiring and hopefully exciting you guys. This is the first of the Flint Community Conversations that we're hosting. We absolutely will be doing another in early August. And we already know at least one of the topics that we're thrilled about we do have a Flint-based community task force um, of so many community members, many of whom are on this call today, and they're really working on addressing and tackling financial toxicity and access to care. So you're going to hear more about that in the August community conversations. So thank you. Thank you again, whether you've you know, been with us before and you've, you've been a partner with us. Maybe you're a Real Men Wear Pink candidate. Maybe you're a researcher's ambassador. Maybe you've participated in making strides against breast cancer in Relay for Life. Uh, maybe you're a volunteer or a partner on the task force I mentioned. Maybe you're a hospital partner or a Gold Together champion for pediatric cancer. Or you haven't quite yet partnered with us in any specific way, but you're joining the call because you're invested in the community and are really looking forward to continue to invest in the community and the work that we're all doing together. So we just really appreciate it. And I know I love Dr. Beverly, you really said um, or what I heard and heard from what you mentioned in the end of your conversation about, we need you, you guys, we need more volunteers from across communities. We need diversity in age and gender and race um, if we want to impact every community, we need to be reflective of our community. So 
thanks again for joining us and thank you for joining us in the future and continuing to bring on partners so we can continue making this progress. Um, I know we mentioned in the beginning, if you had any questions in the chat, um, we'll address those, but also Mindy's gonna add our email addresses in the chat as well. So feel free to reach out to us. Um, I do love my colleague, Jeff here. He, he, he described ACS in a book analogy once and I loved it. It's like, right, we know how at least the first series of this book ends. We know we are going to decrease cancer mortality by 40% by the year 2035. We're gonna do that. But the story of how we get there, it starts and ends with you. So join us, read and write those chapters with us. Thank you. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye all.